Now in this session we're going to use this bridge model to look at the liftoff supports and the new slab designer in version 15. Now rather than look at the whole structure I'm just going to analyse the deck. We've got some shell elements with the taper on. If I switch off the fleshing I can switch on the support conditions. We have some free bearings, we have a roller bearing and a fixed bearing. Now these bearings are fixed so they're rigid supports at the moment. If I look down on plan of the structure we have a 30 degree skew. Now we have two load cases, dead load and an SV vehicle. If I look at the SV vehicle we have this SV vehicle parked in the obtuse corner. Now we're going to run the analysis in a minute but I'm choosing not to run the SV load case so I'm going to switch this off. So when I run analysis it'll only give me the dead load results to start with. Now what we're looking at here are the vertical reactions from the analysis for dead load and we have a high vertical reaction in the obtuse corner. We actually have a negative reaction next to it so we're getting some uplift and we've got a much smaller vertical reaction in the acute corner. And that's because we're using rigid supports. Now to mitigate this, I'm going to put a spring stiffness in to represent an elastomeric bearing. Now I'm going to do this on each of the bearings in turn, so I'm changing them from fixed and putting a spring stiffness of 1E4 in. Once this is done, I can rerun the analysis. But before I do that, I'm going to switch back on the SV load case. So we're now looking at the reactions and you can see by putting the spring stiffness in, I get a better even distribution of reactions across the abutment. But if I look at the SV load case, you'll see that I get a high vertical reaction in this obtuse corner, but in the opposite obtuse corner, I actually get a negative reaction, so an uplift. So even though I'm using now spring stiffness, I still might have to consider liftoff supports. Now to do this, I can create a second analysis within this model. Now here, if I have this selected as all, it's going to create a copy of the geometric sections material supports, but it doesn't copy the loading. If you want an exact copy of analysis one, I hold the control key down, drag this down, and I get an exact copy including the load cases and the loading. I'm going to rename the copy of the analysis to analysis liftoff, and I'm now going to put some liftoff support conditions on this model. Now currently we have some support attributes. If I open up the vertical support, I'm going to add the name lift off to the attribute name and then I'm going to click here lift off and I can identify the lift off direction that I want to work with. Now down here is a force that would have to be overcome before lift off occurs. So if I had 100 I would have to overcome 100 kilonewtons of force before lift off occurred. I'm going to leave that as zero. Down here I can set what happens to the longitudinal and transverse direction when I get lift off in the vertical direction. So I can either have them restrained or I can have them free when it lifts off. I'm going to keep the longitudinal and transverse restraint in this case. Now I need to create a lift off support for each of the three bearings in turn. So I'm going to add the name lift off, switch on the lift off condition and identify the vertical direction and just repeat this again on the last support. Okay, so just got to identify the liftoff direction and I've now created the three attributes. I now have to assign these attributes to the liftoff analysis. Now to do this, I'm just switching back on my geometry points and I'm selecting this fixed bearing and I'm going to drag on the fixed bearing with liftoff behavior into liftoff analysis. I'm going to drag on the roller bearing into the liftoff analysis and the vertical bearings. These are these points here on the model. And I'm then going to drag on the vertical bearing with liftoff behavior into the liftoff analysis. If I rotate the model around now, I can look at the supports. Now, any support condition that has liftoff properties will be shown as orange, whereas I go back to the original analysis, 
the rigid or spring stiffnesses are shown as green. So I know that this is a liftoff model because of the colour of the supports. Now let me just run this. Now I don't need to run analysis one as we already have the results. I only need to run the analysis liftoff. Now the dead load results will be the same for both the analyses. But if I look at the SV vehicle in the liftoff case, you'll see that I get some high reactions in the obtuse corner and where the other bearings have lifted off it's not showing me a number because the bearings have lifted off. Now I can compare these directly by going to the first analysis and looking at the results. Go back to the second. So I can see that the structure has lifted off. Now this is a little bit artificial because really it wouldn't just be the SV vehicle it would have to overcome the dead weight as well. Now rather than just looking at reactions, I'm going to switch on my contours and look at bending moment. Now in this particular model, I'm looking at the MX bending moment. And here you can see the units are kilonewton meters per meter width. Now rather than just looking at the individual load cases, I'm going to create a basic combination. Now here, both sets of results are available, but I'm choosing the liftoff results. And I'm going to create a basic combination. I'm going to factor dead load by 1.05 and the SV vehicle by 1.35 and I'm going to call this combination ULS. I'm now going to create a second combination. Again, same load cases, but this time I'm just going to use a unity factor on both load cases and this is going to be my combination SLS. Now, I'm going to set active the ULS combination and obviously the bending moment you see on the screen changes. Now rather than just looking at bending moment contours, if I go to the bridge menu and slab design, I can look at the reinforcement design for this slab. Now I'm choosing EN 1992 part 2 because we're looking at a bridge. I'm going to use the ULS option here. Now the default values for EN 1992 here, I'm going to keep. If I hit next, I can set up my basic reinforcement properties. Now the longitudinal bars I'm going to leave as 25 mil. The transverse bars I'm going to set as 20. The cover I'm going to set as 30 for the top cover, 45 for the bottom. And my skew angle I'm going to set as 60 degrees. If I hit next, I'm then looking at contours of the bottom reinforced MXB and over here, I'm looking at a contour of millimetres squared of reinforcement per metre width. Now, rather than looking at this, if I go to bar size, the contour changes to show me bar size in terms of millimetres. So in this region, we're looking at about a 25 mil bar. OK, so let's set the SLS combination active and go back to the slab designer. Now I'm going to choose the SLS option. Now the reinforcement I'm going to leave as I set it originally. But this time I'm going to look at crack width. And I've got an allowable crack width here of 0.3. So if I hit finish, we're now looking at a contour of crack width. And you can see the maximum crack width is 0.5. Therefore, if I look at pass and fail, you can see that the red area has failed my crack width check. Now, obviously, this isn't good in this case, so I'm going to go back to the designer and change my reinforcement. Now, in the longitudinal direction, I'm going to increase the 40 mil bars. In the transverse direction, I'm going to go to 25 mil bars. OK, if I now look at my crack width pass fail, everything has now passed the 0.3 crack width check. And if I go back and look at a contour or crack width, you can see my maximum crack width is here, but it's still below my 0.3 target that I was looking for.